What's up, Liron here, and thank you for joining me on episode three of my podcast. Today is going to be a really fun episode, I think. Uh, so I want to talk a bit about what to do when you have no inspiration. And this is an issue that uh, most artists are familiar with. Uh, Occasionally, you just don't feel it. You just don't feel like uh, you want to create. You just don't feel like you'll enjoy it. Um, Perhaps you feel resistance towards the process of creation. Uh, And this can manifest in many different ways. I'm going to start just uh, off the gate saying that I don't experience this state uh, often, and I think this is why it's a very good topic for us to discuss. Um, I usually have the willpower um, or the inspiration or the muse um, almost always, and even if I don't feel it immediately, uh, I have the discipline to at least start doing the steps that will help me feel it, okay? Um, And this is why I think... Uh, It's a good topic to cover uh, early on in the podcast. Um, So let's talk a bit about the subject. So many artists uh, run into these kinds of creative issues. Uh, Maybe for writers, it's the fear of the blank page. uh, Or for painters, it's the fear of the blank canvas. And we all have different ways of dealing with this And uh, what I find uh, from my past when I had this a little more uh, is that I would go through waves. And so I'll have uh, usually the waves lasted for about two to three weeks. So I'll have two to three weeks of amazing creation and really enjoying uh, what I'm doing and lots of creativity. Um, And then I'll have three uh, weeks or so that I just don't feel like... I can muster up or bring or create something of value. And it's really crazy to think about it because we're basically the same person back when we uh, were able to create with passion and very with a lot of freedom. Um, And when we don't feel like it, we're still the same person. So what's going on there? Um, So I think that sometimes it's really a matter of um, internalizing skills. At least for me, I felt like uh, many times when I felt um, uninspired, it actually came because I had something new that I needed to integrate. So I would go through a period of really focusing on on, on an aspect of painting. Um, and it still happens from time to time. And I really, really focus on that. And then I kind of go back to uh, what I do on my routine. And... I have the experience from what I practiced, uh, but it still haven't gone through a complete integration with my previous knowledge. Um, And sometimes you don't know how to merge um, these two. And so um, this is something that I think can lead to this. Um, For me personally, I'm just not a very imaginative person, which uh, counterintuitively is what helps me always have inspiration because I take my inspiration from the outside. I kind of learned what makes me tick and what I enjoy um, looking at and observing and also from other people's art and so on. Um, So I really just was able to that way always get inspiration in some sense. Uh, I don't tend to invent too many things from my own brain. And even when I do, uh, it's really calculated and and planned out like my recent uh, abstract paintings, um, which I really enjoy, by the way. And so this is just my kind of approach to this. Um, Just one more thing. I think a sign that indicates really how prevalent uh, this issue is, if you feel like you are alone in this and um, you may feel like you're misunderstood by others, then trust me, we all experience that. Um, And just a great indication of how common this is, is just the success of books on this topic. Um, For example, um, The War of Art, um, by Stephen Pressfield, I believe, and I'll put everything in the show notes. Um, books like this that really talk about the the resistance you may feel from time to time to creating. Uh, these are just a great example of, of how common these issues are and how uh, probably every artist experiences them. Even me, when I say like I don't almost experience this, it, it still happens like um, every few months, sometimes even more, uh, more than that. Uh, so anyway, I want us to talk a bit about a few things that I found help me get over this. And some of these advice may be very common, even common knowledge, but I believe some of these will be new to you. 
okay? Uh, because some of these I actually developed off my own experience and off my own um, experimentation. And so I do believe this will be new to you, many parts of this, okay? So let's start with, I think, one of the best ways to get over this, uh, and that is to go back to basics. So whenever you feel like you may be stuck or you're not sure how to continue or you're not sure what you want to create or what you're going to create, um, what I find that really helps me is to just go back to the basics of my craft. And for each craft or every craft, it's going to be a little different. So for me, with sketching uh, or with watercolor painting, it's going to be doing specific exercises, for example, just focusing on getting one even layer of watercolor and even wash. Or it could be practicing blending the edges of a wash. Or it could be um, wet in wet technique. If I'm talking about sketching, it may be, or drawing, it may be a few drawing exercises, just drawing circles, drawing parallel lines, doing things that seem menial and kind of dumb. Uh, but actually, they work on your skills. Now, there are a few benefits to doing this, okay? And let me elaborate on that. So the first thing is you go back to basics, so you actually uh, get some practice. And that's always valuable. I still, even when I feel inspired, love to go back to the basics just because I know how important it is to continue improving continually. The times where I see the most growth in my skills is when I just focus on every day going back to my basics, to the things that are basic in my, uh, in my um, art style or my craft. <laughs> so first you get some practice, which is good because if you would just um, sit there and feel sad for not having inspiration, you wouldn't have gotten any practice. Now the second benefit is that many times you'll just find that you pivot off of this uh, basic principle into a full-fledged art piece. So a few times I actually started by just painting one even layer and then while doing this I got an idea and I just kept building upon that practice or exercise of the basics and was able to actually create a painting from that. Um, or many times when I'm sketching and I'm just doing cross hatching or parallel lines, I just suddenly get the burst of inspiration and I'm like, okay, I know what I want to do. Um, so this is really something that helped me. And the another benefit of this is that if you're going through a rough patch in terms of inspiration and it lasts for a, a while, for example, maybe a week or two or even more or even less, um, but it feels like it lasts for a while, this is sustainable. Going back to basics is sustainable, is productive, it will help you improve. And so I find that it really helps me. And some full weeks in the past, I would just do basic exercises every single day. I'd actually have a schedule, a practice schedule. I talk about it on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link in the show notes below, okay? Um, I think this is really important. So this is one thing. Uh, now here's another advice that uh, also may not be as common as uh, as you may think, and that is to change your body language. So many times, um, inspiration and creative creative uh, abilities feel to me like energy. It's like there's creative energy in your body, and sometimes it moves and sometimes it's stale. Now, when it's stale and it doesn't move, you can actually get it to move by changing your body language and moving yourself. So if you're sitting down and you're kind of slumped um, and and or hunched forward and you, you have non-confident body language, which is ironic, you may be in this, in this position if you have no inspiration or you're disappointed at yourself or whatever. But what would happen if you sit up straight or if you get up and jump, um, jump around a room, you know, whatever it is, raise your energy levels. And this is actually something that's super helpful. For me, for example, sometimes I sit down and I, and I want to paint and I won't get inspired. Um, so sometimes I'll just, you know, go back to basics or do something like this. But, but once in a while, I'll just try to get up and really jump and, and like pump myself up and bring my energy level up and maybe put on some music that, that I really like, like for me, and it is a side of me that uh, you <laughs> may not experience as much, at least not on YouTube, uh, is hip hop and rap, especially rap uh, music. And I'm just going to put these things on and like move a bit and it really really, really helps. Okay, so I'm not sure how common that advice is because I made it up. I came up with it again from my own experience. Okay, so the next advice um, is something that may be a little more common uh, and some people may talk about as well. And that is to learn what, what allows you to create even when uninspired. 
okay? And it can be a variation on that, or it can be what what uh, allows you to create when you're uninspired, but it can also be what, um, what sparks inspiration in you. So, for example, for me, what sparks inspiration and fun is just uh, a lot of urban landscapes, like uh, urban cityscapes, like buildings, lots of three-dimensional shapes. I love that. This is what really makes me uh, feel inspired. Uh, so that's one example. Now, an example of something that allows me to create while uninspired, a good example of that would be birds, especially when it comes to watercolor painting. Because birds, I can just paint them no matter what. Um, because because of the medium itself, watercolor, that's meant to blend everything together and everything looks like uh, it has a good flow to it. Uh, because of these features of watercolor that I love, I can just go crazy and put all the paint in on the on the canvas or on the on the paper and just enjoy it. And even if I feel uninspired, this actually brings inspiration to me. Okay, I don't have to worry too much about being creative, uh, which is another side benefit to uh, going back to basics. You don't need to think about creativity, but you do discipline yourself to create. Uh, so this one as well, I just don't need to think about how to be creative or blah blah blah, anything like that. I just do. And from that, I usually get a lot of inspiration. Birds are also, uh, in terms of their shape, it's just a simple drawing to do or doodling. It requires zero thought of me or effort or creativity. So this really works for me. Now, the last uh, kind of thing that works for me, and it's really cliche, is to do it anyway. Um, and I'll explain what I mean by that. So a lot of people say, you know, feel the fear and do it anyway. It's actually a really good book. Uh, or the the War of Art by Stephen Pressfield talks about um, creating even though you feel that resistance or you like you don't feel like creating. Um, I want to focus on another aspect of, of doing it anyway uh, that is less discussed. And it is that you actually train your muscles to, to not... Um, to not to just not believe that a situation where you can't create exists okay it just doesn't uh, it doesn't register so if you feel uninspired you just do it anyway and your brain is just getting trained to just don't to not believe that there is a situation where you can't create because you constantly just create anyway okay so um and again i don't i want to emphasize another thing like i don't mean in a sense of struggling if you do it anyway it shouldn't be a struggle it should be like um i just want to commit to a daily to daily creation regardless of how i feel um it shouldn't be a struggle ever uh, if you feel like it's a struggle just let loose and, and go crazy with what you do you know um really take off every piece of pressure you can off of yourself just don't allow yourself to feel pressured to create something beautiful to create something even average just go crazy um, and f in that sense the, the doing it anyway method works really well for me and I actually took it from from the book feel the fear and do it anyway uh, and I kind of uh, modified it a bit to be relevant to the resistance because the feel the fear and do it anyway talks about how even when you're, um, even when you're, and I'll put again links in the show note. Um, even if you f feel like something scares you, you do it anyway, and and da, because you cannot avoid things scaring you. Um, for me, throughout my life, every day I encounter things that scare me, that I don't want to do, that I feel like really fear or resistance to doing. Now, sometimes this is a hint from your intuition that says don't do it. But many other times, it's actually the opposite. It's it's fear of success. It's fear of taking things to the next level. Will I be able to handle uh, the next level? So even this podcast and, and starting to work on that... Um, <laughs> I I won't say I encountered lots of a lot of resistance, but I did feel like um, uh, sorry I didn't encounter a lot of fear, but I did feel some resistance to starting it. And a lot of this is just fear of success because I knew this is the right move. I knew that making a podcast is what will take me to the next level. And then the doubts kick in, and you think to yourself, well, if I get to that next level, will I be able to uh, to to withstand it? Will I be able to preserve it? Do I deserve it? A lot of weird thoughts like that, um, that you really have to just 
um, own and accept. And so this is exactly the same mentality with this one. It's like you feel the resistance to create, you feel maybe the fear that something good will not come out of it. And then you just do it like a robot, really like a robot. And I find that this really, really helps for me. So if you're similar to me in, in the way you create, I think these advice will, will be really good for you. Now we're all different. So you may have a different approach to this. I really, really urge you to uh, to just try out a lot of things until you find uh, something that works for you. Um, and I'll definitely want to hear more of that. So uh, I'll have uh, my email address and everything in the show notes. So uh, be sure to check it out and uh, let me know uh, if you have any thoughts on this or if you have a different approach to this. Um, I'll try to distribute this podcast in many, many different channels, including my YouTube channel. Um, and so if you encounter it or listen to it there, feel free to drop a comment as well. I'm still learning exactly where I want to put it. So anyway, um, just wanted to to mention again the, the War of Art by Stephen Pressfield. There's another useful book called Mastery by Robert Greene. Um, I'll also put a link to that in the show notes, um, which these two really helped me to understand a lot of things. There's also Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway, which I'll include here. Um, and this is it. Now I want us to move uh, to the artist corner. And as I said, um, in this corner, I feature an artist, a different artist or creator every time. And in this episode, I have something unique for you. So I want to actually feature an artist called David Rock. And this is some of you may recognize this name if you've been following me um, on YouTube or on Instagram, or maybe if you follow Gary Vaynerchuk. Uh, So Gary Vaynerchuk is an entrepreneur I really admire and I learned so much from him and a big part of me doing this podcast came through inspiration I got from him. And David Rock is his uh, video editor and the his film basically uh, producer and and he works on the blog and making the daily videos and, and things change there he's got uh, a few other people on the team so um, David Rock also known as D Rock more commonly um, uh, does a lot of different things in that team uh, I also did a portrait of him and sent it over to him um, and so he's just uh, a really a person that inspires me especially uh, with the the actual video editing and things like this. Uh, I learned a lot from him uh, and and things that I actually applied on my YouTube channel. So I really recommend you check out Gary Vaynerchuk's uh, YouTube channel or even podcast. Well, if you want to see Drock's work, uh, check out his YouTube channel and maybe his Instagram. Again, links in the show notes. So this is a good time to tell you how to get to the show notes. Uh, This will be on my website, Liron Yan. And it's going to be, uh, I'll, I'll tell you the exact URL. So Lironian, that's L-I-R-O-N, then Y-A-N dot com slash EP3. That's short for episode three. So EP3. You can find everything there, all the books we talked about, all the tips I talked about, all the people we talked about, and also links to my YouTube and Instagram uh, accounts where you can find out more cool stuff about what I do. I really hope you enjoyed this podcast. I felt like there was a really good flow today, um, and hopefully I'm improving in this. Uh, So definitely hit me up. Let me know via email, Instagram, YouTube, wherever you want uh, how you feel about this, and I'm really curious to hear your opinion, and if there is topics you want me to cover, definitely let me know. Uh, I want to do this as interesting as possible for you. Uh, And this is it. I will see you again in the next episode.